Phil Niblink is an American animator, comic book artist, and director. He served as an animator for such Disney films as Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Basil the Great Mouse Detective. After leaving Disney, Niblink then served as a co-director for such amblimation features as Fievel Goes West and We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. After feeling restrained by working for large companies, Niblink started his own independent company called Phil Niblink Productions and set out to animate his own movies all by himself, while also serving as writer-slash-director for them. One of those films was an American animated feature called Romeo and Juliet, Sealed with a Kiss, which was made in 2006. The story, well, Romeo and Juliet are two lovers that happen to both belong to two dividing families that hold a grudge against each other, the Montagues and the Capulets. They keep their lover secret until the envious seal prince banishes Romeo to Shark Island. With the help of a friar, Juliet and Romeo fake their deaths to unite the Montagues and Capulets. With peace brought between the families, Romeo and Juliet reveal to be alive, and they live happily ever after. Yeah, Shakespeare purists are bound to be outraged at this film. As you've noticed, there have been a lot of changes. You see, Niblink wanted to make a child-friendly version of the Barnes classic tale of Forbidden Love. He believed that there was a lack of G-rated movies being released at the time and intended to create a safer version of the tragedy. Now, this may have been a brave idea, but the film is too safe. This is why I don't think it works. Niblink has sugarcoated the original play. The template of Shakespeare's story is still intact, but its sharp edge is stripped down to make something really silly. Niblink clearly had no idea what kind of tone he was going for. The film awkwardly jumps between Looney Tunes' -esque chaos and heartfelt sentiment without any concern for what the scene is supposed to reflect. It's hard to take the sensitive scene seriously because most of the film is played up as goofy and over the top. Niblink sort of executes 90% of the film as a comedy. Which isn't a bad thing, but the comedy spoils the serious scenes. My point being, Niblink tries to make a sketch or a gag out of the most heartfelt of scenes. And this makes moments of the film seem quite mean-spirited. Of course, it is possible to take a Shakespeare play and turn it into something for younger audiences without taking away any of the dark content. Take The Lion King, for example, based loosely on Shakespeare's Hamlet. It manages to create a balanced tone of wacky antics with scenes of tension, tragedy, and serious drama. While Sealed with a Kiss, on the other hand, just plays out its source material like one giant joke. Which could have worked if it was a parody, but it's not. It's not just the tone of the film and the way it constantly changes that bothered me. The plotting of the movie is just so dull. Nothing much really happens. Once Romeo and Juliet are married, they just go around kissing each other in random places as animals shun them. Sure, there's some climatic tension with the prince and Romeo in the second act, but this doesn't fix a very scrambled and boring middle portion of the movie. The finale wastes a heap of time by having this long-winded chase scene between the friar and a shark. It makes no sense, it drags on and on and has no point at all. It could have been easily cut out. Some things in the sealed with the kiss also don't add up. Like, why do the sea life animals feel so offended by Romeo and Juliet's relationship? They have nothing to do with the Montagues or Capulets. It's a personal sea lion issue that does not affect any other species. Yet all the animals are appalled by the idea of Romeo and Juliet being an item. Also, the script mixes Shakespearean lines from the original play with new modern dialogue, and it just does not work, because it's one of the main reasons that the film has an unbalanced tone. It cannot decide whether it's respecting or mocking the bard's play. Also, the condensing of the source material causes Romeo and Juliet's romance in this film to seem contrived or forced. They hardly know each other, then claim to be in love at first sight, that really bothered me. Despite this, I do like how a racial allegory is layered under the film's story. The Montagues and Capulets are different colours. One family is white and the other is brown. 
Romeo and Juliet even discussed that their colours are what divides their families. I have no idea whether this was intentional or not, but it somehow creates a metaphorical satire of racial tension. Now, the characters aren't very interesting, I have to say. Romeo and Juliet themselves have the personalities of dry sandpaper, and Mercutio, Romeo's best friend, is intolerably obnoxious throughout the whole film. He spends half of it telling dumb jokes that are far from funny. He can't even take the apparent death of Romeo and Juliet seriously. The prince is a very stale villain because he's so stupid and facetious, so he's hard to find threatening. Okay, so let's talk about the highlight of this film, the animation. Nibbling's background in animation and experience within the industry itself is truly reflected in the way the characters are animated. They're fluent, expressive, and show clear signs of life. What's interesting is that Niblink animated the whole film himself on a Wacom tablet. I think that's quite a brave task to take on, and he really shows his chops as an animator. The character designs are simplistic, but cute. In particular, I like the look of the doe-eyed lovers, Romeo and Juliet themselves. However, there's a lack of detail or colour shading in most designs, but it's the animation that distracted me from how unimpressive the concept art comes across. What's interesting is that all the voices in this film are provided by the director's friends, family, and even Nibbling himself plays the prince. There's something charming and personal about this casting decision, but does it work? Surprisingly, yes. Nibbling's relatives and pals are actually good actors. They're not exactly outstanding or anything, but they put a lot of effort into their performances. None of the voices are wooden or underacted, which is really quite a shock because most of these voices are provided by everyday people. The music of Sealed With A Kiss consists mainly of stock scores thrown onto the film's soundtrack. Is the stock music any good though? And does it fit the scenes? Yes. And yes! The music sounds fantastic and it's like it was directly composed for each scene. However, there are original songs, and oh boy are they horrendous. They're mundane little numbers that are either intolerable, performed badly, slow down the story, or just sound boring. However, with that being said, I have to admit there's a very pretty song shared between Romeo and Juliet that sounds okay, and I did like a cute little cover of Twinkle Little Star performed by Nibbling's daughter as a fish. Romeo and Juliet sealed with a kiss seems to be full of passion and good intentions, but Neblink fails as a storyteller. Sure, he's a master of character animation, but he's no Don Bluth as a filmmaker. I'm sure that far younger audiences will enjoy the film, but it's too zany or intolerable for older audiences to enjoy, possibly. It lacks any substance or edge, the plotting is scrambled enough for me to not even give two hoots about what's happening, and it builds nothing new onto its source material, which has already been adapted countless times before. Feel free to check it out though, but it's more of a showcase of Nibbling's talent as a character animator, rather than an actual heartfelt constructed tale of forbidden love.